now I'm gonna go ahead and say that this story is wild now I've spent six hours of research deep down the rabbit hole I'm not gonna sit here and be all long-winded and talk about the same things over and over and over again so as it stands right now Felix Verdejo 100 and I want to say former but innocent until proven guilty 135 pound contender 27 and 2 former yo this is a crazy story to talk about now I'm all with the whole true crime stuff and everything but man so here's what we're gonna do don't let the the language barrier get to you I put the subtitles down below and here let me move this so you can read them oh, wait not that so you can read them the best you can I'll let this play through but basically he's a person of interest as it stands right now in murdering and dumping the body of a long time 11 year plus girlfriend allegedly um, ah, let me just let it play ah. De una joven hispana embarazada vinculada al boxeador Félix. That's Rodríguez. her right there. Ella desapareció en Puerto Rico, pero ahora solamente han encontrado su carro abandonado. Su familia teme lo peor. Sonia París o Sánchez nos cuenta más. That's her family. Es el llanto desgarrador de la madre de Keisla Rodríguez en el momento que se enteró que la policía había encontrado el carro de su hija desaparecida. All right, so let me stop right here. Um, that's her car. It's alleged that she was on her way to go see Felix Verdejo because she found out she was pregnant. And it's his kid. And allegedly, he was sending her threatening phone calls and texts. That's what they call it. And was like, yo, you know, I'm just throwing a little something in there. It's not, you know, we don't know what the conversation was. We haven't seen the text. But basically, he wanted her to get an abortion. And she's like, no. He has a longtime partner who people were saying was his wife, but maybe things were lost in translation because I had to translate all this stuff. And she knew about it. So the it's looking like that maybe I'm guessing that he it, it's looking like allegedly he didn't want the baby. He met up with her. Something happened. Allegedly. She ends up dead. Um my understanding they found the body of a female i'm not sure if she's fully been identified yet poor soul but she was pregnant you know she just recently found out i uh, was going to go tell you know the boxer then she shows up well then her car is found abandoned she's missing and then it's looking like she is showing up dead along with her unborn child crazy 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 world we live in So, I got to be honest with you. I'm not a lawyer. I am doing a whole, I'm doing a father's advocacy thing. And with the things I've had to learn and see, even my own personal case, when I have a trial for a high profile trial, custody trial, in just, what, 11 days. So, a story like this, I got to be honest with you. We got to take a jump cut because it is upsetting. And I'm a person. You see what I'm saying? Like, that shit hurts. Es el llanto desgarrador de la madre de Keisla Rodríguez en el momento que se enteró que la policía había encontrado el carro de su hija desaparecida en un área baldía en Canóvanas, Puerto Rico. Sus familiares temen lo peor. De acuerdo a ello, Rodríguez salió el día de ayer a trabajar, pero nunca llegó a su destino. Por favor, si la han visto, de no saber. En entrevista con nuestra estación local de Puerto Rico, la hermana de Keishla confirmó que la joven mantenía una relación con el boxeador Félix Verdejo y que esperaba un hijo de él. Según indicaron, la joven quedó en encontrarse con el boxeador para mostrarle la prueba de embarazo. La familia indicó también que Verdejo no estaba contento con su embarazo y que en repetidas ocasiones le habría sugerido abortar. Hoy un vecino alertó a las autoridades sobre un automóvil abandonado y abierto con las características similares al de Rodríguez. Las autoridades registraron el carro y se desplegó una búsqueda por agua en el río Grande de Loíza. 
Es una información que bajo y nosotros también estamos esperando los muchachos de la marítima, ¿verdad? So, this video was when she was missing. It's looking like yesterday um, that the body was recovered and i don't believe she's been identified officially yet as it stands sunday may the 2nd um 9 43 a.m eastern standard time uh so here how do you say your name hold on hold on give me a minute keishla marlon rodriguez ortiz who's 27 years old was 27 years old crazy shit Verdejo's 27 years old um i last covered Verdejo's last few fights the one that were available ones that were available on espn like literally me doing videos after his fight goes off um i got some stories here that if you want to see really you should go to my twitter page uh t street um for life like i ain't gonna lie the story is is, is disturbing man because it's looking like it's just so cut, clear, and dry, but innocent until proven, you know, guilty. She disappeared Thursday morning, you know, right now it's Sunday morning, after informing professional boxer Felix Verdejo and his wife that she was expecting here. <sighs> that she was expecting, hold on, his child, her family claims. Verdejo had been the only one to see her. Officers arrived Saturday, May 1st, around 2 p.m. to the area of the Moscoso Bridge after a body was discovered floating in the San Jose Lagoon area. The police commissioner said Verdejo was a person of interest but not a suspect, adding that they have a video of a van dumping the body. The welterweight from San Juan was questioned on April 29th, that was Friday. Well, no, that was Thursday night, right? April the 30th was Friday. Here's all you need to know. And they have all of her information. She worked with pets. It's looking like they've had a relationship for over a decade. Following the box, following this, the boxer did not meet Keisha at her house, Keishla, but summoned her to another place. As soon as she found out that her daughter did not attend a work, Ortiz's Riviera, this is the mother, I'm guessing, recalled the conversation she had with Keishla and asked her other daughter to call up the boxer. But when she asked for Deja where Rodriguez was, he said, I don't know. Then I said to him, you're lying to me. That's the first lie because she talked to me a little while and told me she was going, she was that you were going to our house when you finished exercising. When she told him she was pregnant, then he started threatening her that if that if you are going to take them off, you're going to have an abortion. I'm guessing that's where it was translated. That I'm going I'm a public figure, that I have a family, that if the family here or there said she don't worry, you don't have to admit it. I just want my baby or tease Riviera alleged. Oh, it's bad. So it's looking like, you know, he didn't want the baby. Looking at it as being, I guess, shame. Um, here, I got some more content. Uh, they told last night, yesterday, sometime, they told his Dodge Durango all-black tent. They're saying they had video. Look, here it is. They're, they're, they're in the river right now. They say they have video of the body being dumped and it was a van but was that a lost in translation type of thing did the black here I'm pulling up the picture now I'm at the video of the car and SUV now like did it look black you see what I'm saying I mean did it look like a van because it was dark I mean he's saying they had video also they've subpoenaed or requested um, his phone and text log so here's a video right now of them over grabbing the car. Now, let me just mute it. Now, how it would work is they can tell if it was like a body in there or even any type of fibers or stuff, you know, like that old, you know, CSI, DNA, all that. 
So once again, once again, I'm not no doctor, I'm not no lawyer, but I can consider myself somewhat, you know, especially with all I had to learn from my um, father's rights advocacy organization. But I'm, I've been learning a lot. And right now what I'm looking at is not looking good. So he's lawyered up. Uh, they got as well. Phone records. It's looking like she was the lad that he was the last person to be with her in this trace. Then you got the threatening phone calls and texts. You know, then he met with, you know, let me pull it up. He met with a detective. I believe it was the head detective. Hold on. I've been pulling the stories up and making sure I tweet them so I can have them. Looking like he met with the head detective and just was like, you know, I'm talking to my lawyer, that type of shit. I don't have nothing to say. So I've always believed that, and just recently I had a situation of when a heavy allegation is put against you, if you ain't do nothing wrong, confront that shit. Get in their face like, yo, I didn't do that shit. You see what I'm saying? So his situation, it's like, bro, y'all had a relationship. Even if it was something you weren't supposed to have, that was still your friend, wasn't it? You see what I'm saying? Like, you know, what the fuck? It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. So, like I said, it's looking like to me. Oh, let me translate this. Yeah. Did it translate? His, you know, um, his partner, the one that he didn't want to find out. His actual, not his wife, but his longtime girlfriend. Her name is Elise Santiago Sarah was interviewed this afternoon. Um, this was uh, Friday afternoon. And basically, look, yes, I knew about the relationship. This is the police uh, guy that he talked to. And he's saying... De Keishla, de que sí tenía una relación, este, lo citamos para preguntarle si él sabe del paradero de Keishla, si él ha visto, si ha tenido comunicación con ella, para que ayude a la policía de Puerto Rico a tratar de localizar a Keishla, ¿no? Eso fue eh, nuestra misión o nuestro este, eh, empeño de que Félix Perdeo viniera aquí en este día de hoy. ¿Dijo algo y respondió a sus preguntas? No, no respondió a ninguna de las preguntas. O sea, su abogado lo aconsejaron de que, pues, no. It's just a horrible, horrible looking situation, and he ain't looking good. I'm guessing this is her mother. Yo vivo en Orlando y yo siempre tengo comunicación con ella. Nosotros hablamos en la mañana, en mediodía, en la tarde, en la noche, más tardecito, siempre. It'd be great if somebody can pretty much paraphrase and translate what she's saying. So I'll pin the comment at the top. So when people want the translation, they'll see like this is what she was talking about. That'd be great. It's two minutes long. Estamos en comunicación. Y ayer nosotras hablamos a las 7 de la mañana. Y ella me dijo, mami, Feli viene a... See, I understand to an extent. So she's like going through like, you know, like she told me she was going to go see... You know, like, she, you know, at this time. Feli viene a ver la prueba de embarazo, pero la de sangre. Okay. Y yo le dije, chica, ten cuidado. ¿Por qué le dije ten cuidado? Pues porque ya la había amenazado de que no tuviera el bebé, que, 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 que se haga un aborto, que él tiene su familia, que él es boceador, figura pública. Y como a la, yo estoy en mi trabajo en Orlando, y como a las nueve y media y veinte, me llama mi otra nena, Berelis, mami, y yo que Marlene no está en el trabajo, me llamó el jefe. Y eso para mí es súper raro, porque ella, ella es bien responsable en su trabajo, ella trabaja en un grooming, ella tiene en su casa dos perritos, dos gatitos, ella siempre está rescatando por ahí animales, echándole comida, y eso a mí me estuvo raro, pero ya... Que Isla me había dicho a mí que él iba para la casa. Y yo le dije, llama a Feli. Llámalo. Yo le dije a mi nena, dame el número. Y ella me dijo, no, yo lo llamo en, en línea y, te, y hablas conmigo. Eh, cuando Feli está en línea, yo le dije, ¿y mi hija? Así con esta actitud. ¿Y mi hija? Y él me dijo, yo no sé. Y yo le dije, ya me están mintiendo. 
ya me está, ese es el primer embuste, porque ella habló conmigo ahorita y me dijo que tú ibas para la casa de ella cuando tú terminaras de hacer el ejercicio. Y dijo que no, que no sabía de ella, me fui del trabajo, me monté en un avión, me salí del trabajo, directo de mi trabajo al, 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 aeropuerto. al aeropuerto. Yo solamente vine con una cartera, mira, esta es la ropa de ayer me he bañado, yo no he comido, yo lo que quiero es que aparezca a mí. <laughs> It's a little too much for me. A little too much for me. But basically, that's pretty much everything. And like I said, I, I, I come through it. You know, I don't know. I didn't go to school for none of this stuff. I know I keep saying it. But for somehow, over the last five, ten years or so, I've gotten really involved, unfortunately, in like learning like how the legal system works, police, criminal investigations. And right now... Uh, even though I don't know all the all the legal mumbo jumbo jargon, but still, nonetheless, this ain't looking good. And because he's a celebrity and high profile, if he was like one of us, me or you, we would've been in jail. You see what I'm saying? But they like you know celebrity. Let's make sure we do it all right. You know, high profile too. Like he's a star down there in Puerto Rico. You know, there's being said that there was a, an accomplice. Uh, it's not looking good. It's not looking good, Jack. So I can expect, we're going to see, he's just a person of interest right now. Top rank boxing, his promoter, who, you know, I haven't mentioned. Um, and remember, they don't have nothing to do with this shit. They did the promoter put on the fights. You know, he's down in Puerto Rico. They don't have people following him around and all that. But they put out a statement. And they did it classy. They did it classy. I like how, you know... They did it, you know, here it is right here if you want to read it. I like how they did this. They're saying, like, get right out there and, you know, confront the situation. And, you know, they had to know, like, as soon as they got a call, like, yo, fucking motherfucking Vadejo last night. And they're saying it's some shit, you know? Oh. You know, Carlos um, um, Monzon, he was a known serial abuser. Like a serial, serial abuser. The Edwin Valero situation was nasty. Who else? We got now Verdejo involved in some shit. I know I'm missing some other boxers. Who else am I missing? Mike Tyson shit. Like, who else am I missing? And Toro Gotti, it was, this is this is real, real funny, funny, funny situation. You know, Valero got some funny, funny, funny situation. Like, it's all, ah, I don't want to go down you know, too far in a rabbit hole. But anyway. I'm getting up out of here, man. I'm doing some work. I'm remodeling, and I'm trying to get rid of this yellow tent that's going on. I'm looking all yellow. Uh, but I had to do this video, get it off my chest. Like, shit. Ugly situation. Prayers to the Ortiz family. As far as Verdejo is concerned, listen, it's not looking good, brother. Like, you know, so, listen, once they say, like, he's been arrested, it's like, I'm going to let him have it. Because it's not looking good. Like It's like almost like textbooks. She tell you she's pregnant. And you don't want the child. Then you go kill her. Like who does that? People be weird. Look. Ugh. And I ugh, I wish I can tell you about my situation. But I can't. You have to wait till it's on the news. Legally. 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 I'm starting um, a father's rights organization. It's called uh, fathersagainstabuse.org. I've already had the domain names. I've already been building a team behind the scenes. I've already been pumping like funds and funds and funds into it. And basically what it's going to be is um, helping low-income fathers, well, parents in general, navigate their way through the family court system and also what signs to look out for regarding parental alienation, especially during a time where gun violence is completely out of control. In Philadelphia and all our major cities when you have 15, 16, you know, killing each other. It's happening all day, every day. And we're just used to it. A uh, 17-year-old shot in the head. A uh, 14-year-old boy kills 15-year-old boy. You know, and then they're always asking, where's the parents? And I'm starting to realize we were being chased out. Especially fathers that wanted to do for it. Either with child support. Either with false uh, PFAs. Uh, protection from abuse orders. Or just plain old... Uh, lawyer incompetent, playing old judge incompetence or money churning lawyer scams. Like they don't give a f really uh, fuck about the parents. They care about the money that you're bringing in. It's shocking, but I've witnessed it and we're exposing it. Thank you for watching. I'm Teach Three Controversy with FightView360.com and FathersAgainstAbuse.org and .com. Please subscribe. And oh yes, um, 
of I uh, every few months or so for those who watch the channel I do dabble into true crime so this is not just me doing a video just because he's a boxer like this is a really you know so I guess what I'm saying is I'm gonna follow up on the situation I'm not saying I'm gonna be doing videos every time something come out but when something big happens right now it's looking like he gonna get booked you know mm, it's not looking good History controversy with fightview360.com and followers against abuse.org. Please subscribe.